Good afternoon and welcome to Matters Financial and Geopolitical from a Frontier. Normal service is resumed. Um, I hope the year started well for you. It's certainly been an extraordinary geopolitically volatile uh, start to 2020. Uh, to wit, the surge in gold prices uh, to their highest in more than six years makes gold the most overbought um, it's been in two decades. Uh, Spot Gold's relative strength index jumped above 86 on Monday. That's uh, via Mr. Barrow. As I've said be previously, quoting Ben Bernanke, the purest geopolitical proxy in the markets is gold. As Ben Bernanke once said, people hold gold as protection against what we call tail risks really, really bad outcomes. The price of gold has been rising for a while and it's climbed by more than 25% since November 2018, according to The Economist. Uh, currently, we're at 1565.60. Um, I think we're going to come off a little bit unless events run away from us um, in the Middle East, and they could at any moment. Uh, the Chinese renminbi flexes, says David Inglis, about to fall through its 200-day moving average. As I said last year, it's the most important currency to watch, and it is currently at, oh, it's below 694.50. So that's a pretty st a strong move that we're seeing right there. Home Thoughts, Solo Journey, Out of Cell Range, A Fire, A Journal, My Thoughts, and The Stars, Artemis CM underscore Curl. And certainly that's one of my greatest pleasures in life. It is the Diani Regatta 2020 week. This is from Uduni. Um, and it's a lovely photograph. Uh, we were there a few years ago and stayed at 420 South on Diani Beach. This was a photo I took it's without a filter one early morning. Um, it's very beautiful down there. A bluefin tuna weighing a staggering 276 kilograms was sold for $1.8 million on Sunday at a Tokyo fish market, the second highest price on record. Kiyoshi Kimura, the owner of the chain, the Sushi Zanmai restaurant chain, told Japan's public broadcaster NHK that even though the fish was expensive, he was keen to make the winning, winning bid so he could serve the best tuna to his customers. This was a lion, it's a short video, about 10 seconds, and he was a very impressive fellow that we met at Mahali, Missouri. He was one of two brothers. Uh, the pride had three lionesses and nine cubs, and it was lovely to spend some time uh, with him and his pride. Political reflections, wherever you stand on the political spectrum, Kam and I choking up while leading the funeral prayers for Suleimani in Tehran was very powerful. Uh, this video was via the government-run daily Iran via Kian Sharifi. And then there's another video I found as well by Rapley. Um, and uh, extremely powerful rendition of the prayers. And I think, you know, there's a lot of public relations which is denigrating Kamenei and saying that uh, Soleimani was basically a terrorist, but I think it, it shows a complete lack of understanding. Go back and read the Iranian history back from Mossadegh, the Shah of Iran. There's a short book by Richard Kapuczynski called Shah of Shahs to give you a better flavor of the intensity of the Iranian psyche and what this assassination about which I wrote has triggered that intensity. If you, you know, we had some kind of reaction against the regime, but I can guarantee you that it was the equivalent of Pompeo's tweet about the people celebrating in the streets when you compare it with the outpouring of emotion. 
that we have seen. Um, as I said, I was quoting from Russia with love, Crostein outlines to Blofeld his plan. Blofeld, read Trump. Kronstein, you are sure this plan is foolproof? Kronstein, read Pompeo. Yes, it is, because I have anticipated every possible variation of counter move, and I would argue it's practically impossible to do that exercise. Um, I also said I expected oil to come off the boil this week because Iran will not react immediately, but the spike risk will remain sky high and the price will spike when the counter move is made. So um, oil currently down at 62.58 cents when I put out my December conviction buy um, that was around sixty dollars, just below sixty dollars, uh, just just below sixty-one dollars. So we've given back quite a bit of that strong push higher that we witnessed. Brent crude dropped ninety cents or one point three percent to sixty-eight dollars a barrel. That was from above seventy dollars. WTI uh, sixty dollars, sixty-two dollars and forty-nine cents. Very interesting thread I came across by Reza Marashi over the past few days. I've spoken extensively with Korea government US officials. We have no functional national security decision making process in place. We have no plan for what comes next. They are woefully unprepared for what's about to pop off and they're too stupid to realize it. People here are freaking out, and rightfully so. We're still trying to dig out from underneath the last war of choice, and now they're trying to start a new one. I finally cracked open the bottle of scotch you gave me that I've been keeping stashed away in my desk drawer. Um, when did most of us find out about the killing of Soleimani after it already happened? Since then, we've been trying to cobble together contingency planning on the fly, but these charlatans ignore most of it. And then Trump does more stupid shit that puts us back at square one. All Trump cares about is shitting on Obama's legacy, sucking up to donors and detracting from impeachment. None of this is about American interests or security. He's surrounded by ideological lunatic sycophants like Pence and Pompeo, but they're far from the only ones. It's worth reading uh, the thread in full. Few doubt that Iran is readying a response to the assassination of Soleimani. The question is, what will it look like? Richard Haas of the Council on Foreign Relations, writing in the FT, says this will not be a traditional conflict fought by uniformed soldiers on clearly defined battlefields. The arena will be the entire region, indeed possibly the world, and Tehran has a wide range of targets to choose from. And you see that in this graphic, uh, which shows the constellation of Iran-backed forces in the region, and including as far as Saudi Arabia, where the oil is in the eastern province, for example, where there's a majority Shia population. And in fact, Iran has kept them on a leash um, until now, probably. Bull in Iran searches, that's from the marketeer, Tea commodity geopolitically induced spikes in crude oil tend to be among the most toxic exogenous shocks for markets due to their stagnation, stagflationary impact. Iranian cultural sites, this is from SS Beltran, several shrines are completely covered in extremely intricate geometrical cut mirrors. Going inside any of them makes you feel like Iranians have found a way to capture all of the galaxy's stars in a single building. 
Iran's oil production in October decreased by 18,000 barrels, reaching 2.146 million barrels per day. Iran was producing 3.8 million barrels per day before the United States imposed sanctions in November 2018. What Iran produces now is mostly for its domestic consumption, with just 350,000 barrels left for export or storage. So you can see how Trump, who's been a big proponent of coercive financial currency and sanction warfare, and his policy of maximum pressure on Iran is that policy's apogee. And in those numbers, you see that he squeezed Iran down to 350,000 barrels a day of exports, which really, in the scheme of things, is zero. The end is nigh. We're in Sarsfield, Victoria, where the fire swept through this community on New Year's Eve. It's a ghost town with many homes destroyed. That haze is smoke from the larger bushfires this past week. This is the feedback loop and the risks of dieback where we enter a phase of cascading system collapse. HMAS Adelaide was conducting flight operations off Eden. Um, Boris Johnson spoke of smart cities which pullulate with sensors all joined together by the Internet of Things, bollards communing invisibly with lampposts, and asked, how do you plead with an algorithm? Let's turn to the currency markets and see what's going on. Euro dollar 111.78, dollar index 96.71, Japanese yen 108.34, Swiss franc 0.9694, the pound 131.45, the Australian dollar very weak after a weak jobs number 0.6904, India rupee 71.7928, South Korean won 11.6646, the real 406.18, Egyptian pound 16.07, and the rand at 1420. This is the dollar index, 96.717, and the euro dollar last trading at 111.78. Commodity markets, interesting article in Bloomberg, what to watch for in commodities in 2020. Commodities posted a 10% advance last year. Um, the first graph is of OPEC versus U.S. shale, non-OPEC production, and look at how OPEC has been declining and the non-OPEC has been surging, particularly the U.S. Copper struggled to sustain a rally in 2019, but uh, Bloomberg is predicting the outlook is turning brighter. Um, Citigroup forecast China's demand will expand 2.6% this year, underpinned by gains in grid investment. Bulls in Arabica coffee coming off its best year in five. We'll be watching developments in Brazil. After 2019's harvest was marred by irregular weather and poor quality, green bean stockpiles are set to drop to the lowest in more than five decades. So that's interesting. After a tumultuous year, iron ore is expected to slide in 2020. Prices, which hit as much as $120 a ton in July, ended the year in year 90. Fallout in uh, pork prices lifted global meat prices to a five-year high and sent pork exports from Europe and elsewhere surging. I've written about the pork apocalypse. And palm oil, the most used vegetable oil, ended the year with a 44% gain, the best showing in a decade. Emerging markets, why so many emerging markets are blowing up right now. Great radio interview, Tracy Alloway and the stalwart. Um, uh, and they speaking to what I was writing about in October last year, the new economy of anger. State Councillor and Foreign Minister Wang Yi sets out for Africa. It's the 30th consecutive year that Africa is chosen as the destination for Chinese Foreign Minister's first overseas visit of the year. That's a video from the MFA China. 2019 in review, Africa for optimists and pessimists, Mail and Guardian, Simon Allison. Fethi Saroui, Collective 220, by the Presidential Palace, a protester struck five empty tear gas cartridges on his fingers. It's BBC African Photography. 
And just to quote Kapuscinski, if the crowd disperses, goes home, does not reassemble, we say the revolution is over. I was saying in October, it's not over by any stretch of the imagination. Billionaire Dos Santos's suitability as shareholder in question after asset freeze, says the Bank of Portugal. In an email to Reuters, the Bank of Portugal said it is considering all the newly available information which could be relevant for the evaluation of a suitability as a shareholder of the institutions we survive. Um, they hold a, a lot of investments in Portugal, including Portuguese banks. Um, Bobby Wine was detained at Kasangati police station in Uganda. Russian peacekeepers in Africa receive both respect and love of the pop local population. That's the Russia UN handle. Um, 28th of October, I wrote an article of From Russia with Love about the Russia-Africa summit and Russia's re-entry into Africa. South African all shares up 0.91% year-to-date. Dollar rand at 14.20. Egyptian pound at 16.07. EGX 30 down 5.36% year-to-date. Nigeria faces challenges of politicking and rising debt in 2020. The government will need to fund its $29 billion spending plans at a time when economic growth is faltering. Revenue has fallen short of target by at least 45% every year since 2015, and shortfalls have been funded through increased borrowing. In its latest credit report on the country, Moody's warned that the state is likely to take on even more debt, and the budget deficit is set to widen further. The risk that the Naira will have to be devalued is mounting. The central bank has sought to maintain high yields as an incentive to foreigners to invest in debt denominated in the local currency, attracting large dollar inflows in the process. The Naira had remained relatively stable in 2019. Countries' external reserves are down to a year low of $38 billion. Yields have dropped to 13% from a peak of 18% in 2017. Um, and as I said, on the 9th of December, everyone knows how the story ends. When the music stops, everyone will dash for the exit and the currency will collapse. Foreign investors are propping up the Naira to the tune of $16 billion. Nigerian all shares up 1.85% year to date. Ghana Stock Exchange is down 0.75% year to date. Kenya arrests three men for trying to breach British Army camp, the failed break-in at Laikipia, where the British Army trains about 10,000 troops a year, was captured on a security camera. It's not clear whether the attempt to break into the British base was connected to the attack on the base in Manda Bay that killed three Americans. This Kenya attack has no connection with the Middle East attack. It is a fight against between us and the US said Abu Musab, al-Shabaab spokesman for military operations. We heard chatter three months ago that Shabaab was planning intensive cross-border operations and had identified commanders to lead those operations, Matt Bryden. Al-Shabaab used the phrase, Jerusalem will never be Judaized when announcing Sunday's attack on the Simba base in Lamu and during attack a year ago at the Dusit. Tom Munyalo, an artist who has a workshop about 350 metres from the Simba base, told Reuters there'd been an unusual power cut in his area that night. I clearly am of a view that there are, this is an inside job. Moments later, he heard gunfire and shouts of takbir, takbir, an Arabic expression for God is great. NIC Bank's John Gachora is urging tougher bank rules to force more bank deals. He wants the minimum capital requirement to be raised tenfold to $99 million, which will force marriages between lenders. Um, it's hard to get the banks to play their rightful role if every day all you're doing is competing on the margins. NCBA Kenya uh, has a market cap of $550 million and trades on a P ratio of 5.756. This is their board, which is... Uh, um, a mixture of all the very powerful old families here in Kenya. Nairobi all shares up 0.35%, NSE 20s up 1.96% year to date. Thank you.